Over the years, Zombies has changed a lot, and mostly for the better, but there are some features that have been removed that I wish hadn't been. These can be silly little things that don't really affect the game, to things that I think would make the current games better if they were brought back. But I miss them all the same. I miss these upright crawlers. They first appeared in World at War's Shinonuma and were present throughout Black Ops 2, but were removed in Black Ops 3 for some reason. It's sad because they were my favorite type of crawler and I don't know why they would have been removed. I miss the way that the point counter on the HUD used to count up or down to whatever value it should be. This little animation was present in World at War and Black Ops, but was removed in Black Ops 2 where the points would jump straight to the new amount. Perhaps they just didn't think that coding in such a small detail was worth it, but it may actually be returning in Modern Warfare 3. I miss when the zombies wouldn't despawn whenever you got too far away. I understand that it was a necessary change in Black Ops 2 with the maps getting bigger and bigger, and it does give the game a faster pace, but it was cool to see a bunch of zombies in the distance, or to be able to save crawlers at the end of rounds without having to babysit them. I miss when the zombies would talk when you threw a monkey bomb in World at War and Black Ops 1. I always thought this was a really creepy detail, but sadly it was removed in Black Ops 2. Maybe they thought that because Samantha was no longer in control, it wouldn't make sense, but they still chased the monkey bombs, so that wouldn't add up. I miss when the maps had limited weapons available. This presumably was done to ensure that each obtainable gun was unique, even within the same weapon class, but starting with Infinite Warfare, every weapon in the game would become available in Zombies, and even though they are still technically different from each other, the differences are much less noticeable than before. I miss when attachments used to come from the Pack-a-Punch machine. In my opinion, receiving some attachments on your gun after upgrading made the Pack-a-Punch feel more valuable. But starting with Black Ops 3, attachments would be applied to your weapons from the start, and there wasn't a way to earn them in the match. The closest we got was the Armory in Cold War, which allowed you to use Salvage to change the attachments on your gun, but they still come with attachments anyway. I miss when the round was displayed with tally marks until round 10. I always thought this was a cool stylistic choice, and much more interesting than just standard numbers, but in Black Ops 3, to make sure that they didn't overlap with your perks on the HUD, the tally marks only went up to 5. To me, it just seems like they're gone too quick. And on a similar note, I miss when the round number used to change in sync with the music. It used to be perfect with the old round fading out and the new one fading in, and even Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward did this in their games. But starting with Black Ops 3 and every future Treyarch game, when one round ends, the new number immediately appears on screen, but it just doesn't match with the music. I miss the original zombie sound effects. They were in use for 8 years from Verruckt to Revelations until they recorded new ones for Zombies Chronicles. It's not that there's anything wrong with the new sounds, but the originals will always be special to me, and I would love to have a setting to turn them on. Maybe they'll make a bundle out of it. I miss when the spawn rooms had differently priced weapons, one being 200 points, and the other being 600. One was cheap, but very ineffective past the first few rounds, and the other was better, but could not be immediately purchased. I think it would have been cool if we saw more maps do this, but the only ones that do are the original four World at War maps, their Black Ops 1 ports, Shinonuma and Vanguard, and Blood of the Dead, which had the RK7 in spawn for 700 points. Not that you'd need to buy it anyway. I miss when it only took two hits to go down without Juggernaug. It was very unforgiving, but it made those earlier rounds much more intense as any mistake could be fatal. Then ExoZombies implemented a three hit down system, which was fine, but that later evolved into a four hit, then five hit down. The only game that would ever reduce the starting health was Black Ops 4 either through custom mutations or by playing the realistic difficulty. I miss when the HUD in Zombies used to have its own unique style. Usually it would have had blood smears or other thematically appropriate designs, and some games even had different HUDs for different maps. But starting with Cold War, a lot of that style was lost. Sure, it still has everything it needs to be functional, like the round number and perks, but they're not nearly as artistic as they used to be. I miss when you would unlock a bonus map by beating the campaign. In World at War, the whole mode was hidden until you finished the campaign, and in Black Ops, you'd unlock 5. But starting with Black Ops 2, I guess they realized that they could charge us for these bonus maps, so they were no longer rewards from the single player. But imagine how cool it would have been if you finished Black Ops 2 and you unlocked Nuketown Zombies. 
Or if you finished Black Ops 3 and you loaded into the Giant. Or if you finished Black Ops 4 and... I miss Kevin's music. One of the best parts of every new map release was seeing Kevin Sherwood upload the new song on his YouTube channel. Each game would basically have its own album that was composed of songs heavily influenced by the lore, and I don't know of any other game that's done something like that. But after Firebase Z, Kevin stopped making music for zombies and has been focused on other audio work. I don't know if that's by choice, and if it is then that's fine, but I miss him. Come back, Kevin.